Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another video from Ling Ling again! Yay! <laughs> so recently I have received a lot of questions about how to practice Chinese when you're either, either not in China or you're really busy. So basically how to practice Chinese on the go. Yeah, so I thought why not make a video about that because let's be honest, we don't have time to practice or go to Chinese classes every single day. If you do, you're very lucky. But there are some people who need to earn money as well. Um, so how can we practice Chinese on the go, put it into our schedule, not waste time or like spend time on it when you don't have the time? Well, today we're going to talk about this. So I have come up with five ways for you to practice Chinese when you are on the go in a metro, in a bus, on your bike, uh, walking, Whatever, let's get started. Okay, number one is a very convenient, very easy way to practice your listening and reading skills. Basically, what I do, this is if you're in China, okay? They have, here in China, they have a lot of video apps. I will write some names here. Okay, so a lot of video apps and then you can watch your favorite TV show and then you can download like one, two, three episodes. So every time you're sitting in a metro, you're sitting in a bus, you don't know what to do, you can just start watching your TV show. Chinese people do that all the time. Also, if you're not in China, you can still do this. You just go to YouTube, you search for a Chinese TV show. I'll give you a few uh, options. Uh, I'll look up, see what I can find on YouTube for you. And then you just download the episode onto your computer, put it on your phone, and then when you're out and about, you just turn it on and you walk and listen, or walk and read, or you sit and listen, you sit and read. Okay, that's smart, right? That is basically learning Chinese on the go. And it's fun, yeah. So number two is actually a little bit similar. Well, a lot of these are similar, but it's different ways still, kind of. Same, same, but different, you know. <laughs> so in number two is that you can also download Chinese music. Uh, what I do is I use the Chinese um, music apps and then I listen to some music if I like it I download it also some of the apps if you listen to it then when you go outside you turn off your Wi-Fi It can still play the songs the cool thing about the apps is that they do have the lyrics on the app So I can sit and read and listen to the song and if I'm outside and nobody is around I can sing it too. How cool is that? If you're not shy, just go with it, you know, just explore and try. I feel like that's a really good way for you to practice uh, your pronunciation because you will listen and copy what the person is singing, right? And you will sing the same next time. So that's another really good way to practice Chinese on the go. Number three is also a really great way to do it. Um, if you have been, okay, let's see. Um, there is this dictionary app, I've been talking about it so many times. It's called Pleco, P-L-E-C-O. You download it to your phone and it's offline. It's really amazing. I just learned a few uh, weeks ago that you can go in and download HSK number one, two, three, four, five, or six. Okay, so if you're wondering what is HSK, well, it's Hai Yu Shui Ping Kao Shi. So it means the Chinese language test. They have a bunch of vocabulary. It's kind of more of a boring way of learning, but it's still very good. Basically, it will test you, right? So you can say, I want to practice 100 characters. Then it's going to come up with a character. You're going to guess what it is, and then you click yes or no if you guess the right thing or not. It's a really good way to practice your vocab as well. If you want to practice your own vocab and not the HSK, then you have to go into the app and write the characters you want find them in the dictionary save them to your list and then you start um, doing the test as well I've done this a few times before like right now I watched this really heavy 
political Chinese TV drama and because there are so many heavy words uh, I don't know from before I didn't know from before so I put them in my dictionary and next time I sit in the metro I or the bus I will just click and see okay do I remember this character no or yes do I yes or no <laughs> do I remember this character yes or no it's a really great way to practice your vocabulary on the go also if you do have Chinese classes and you're getting out of class and you need to go one hour with the subway you can sit and do this you can also do it manually you know go down go home write the the small cards, um, flash cards and sit and swipe but I don't like that people look at me like that so and it's it's much easier to do on the phone the phone is going to take care of everything for you really <laughs> yeah so Pleco that's another way to do it on the go Number four is um, a very simple thing. You're not, maybe not going to learn that much immediately, but I found it very useful anyways. So basically, I put my phone into Chinese. Only Chinese, right? Um, my phone has been in Chinese for like three years, I think, and it's so good for my Chinese. So even though <laughs> very often I don't know how to read out the character but I know what it means right and that's also very useful um, also if the phone uh, like uh, you can go on Taobao and Taobao will be in Chinese you can practice your reading while you're shopping um, that's how I learned a lot of words like um, blouse and dress and shoes and high heels and low flats and you know all these things um, I think it's kind of a good way to have fun on the go and still learn some characters, right? <laughs> Number five is the most serious idea I think I have, okay. So since I started learning Chinese, I've been using this program called Chinese, uh, Chinese Pod. So if you haven't heard about it, you really need to check it out because it's an amazing program. Basically before I had problems finding content that I really wanted to study. Um, if you have studied just a little bit of Chinese, you know that a lot of the Chinese books that's written by Chinese um, uh, writers or authors they're kind of dull like they are boring the topics are really like Ugh. yeah I know I'm sorry I don't want to offend anyone but like HSK I've been studying HSK 5 book for the last few weeks it's killing me guys it's killing me it's draining my energy and I'm just like how can you make Chinese so boring? And I think that's why so many people don't like studying Chinese because one, it's difficult. Second, if all the stories are so freaking boring and you don't know how, why you should use that vocabulary or like why you should learn that vocabulary is not useful for you afterwards. Oh my God, why you wanna keep doing it, right? So what I've been doing is I've been signing up for Chinese pot and then they have 4,000 lessons in different levels so they have like from very beginner to very advanced and I have loved that oh my god I remember when I started I would download their podcast on my phone and then I would walk around and then I, I remember one episode they talked about sha and shang right so one means up and one means down and it's so freaking frustrating because they sound so similar right sha and shang okay so I would listen to this podcast again and again and it's the really cool thing is that they speak half Chinese and half English so somebody one guy is translating everything Thing the girl says it's so great and the best part is that the subjects the topics of the lessons they're so relatable I'm like oh my god I need this okay so a few days ago I was looking through it um, through all the lessons to see what can I learn next and like basically four or five episodes I just wanted to t uh, learn immediately because I was like oh my god this topic so interesting that topic so interesting this topic so interesting and they have a conversation like a dialogue and vocabulary and grammar rules and they're talking it's just very very well done but it costs money and I get that so if you're not into investing in that kind of thing um, it's fair enough but um, you can try it out I think there are like a hundred lessons that's like for free so you can try it out first and then if you want to you can sign up so anyways I put the link below and also the names of the other apps I've been talking about so Chinese pot um, that's the one I feel like uh, is the best one if you really want to go serious I put it on my phone as well I download some uh, lessons there and as I said I sit in the metro I'm just like oh. 
oh, that's very interesting. Oh, that's very, you know, listening and learning and all these different words. And it's just so useful, it's so freaking useful. So, 赞同, 赞同, 人受, 人受, 一世, 一世, 签约, 签约. So, anyways, that's just uh, my idea of uh, a good way to study Chinese on the go. I really, really love that because, as I said, I've been also reading the Chinese news and stuff, but oh, it's just really, mm, it's dull, it's slow, and I just don't learn enough. I don't know. <laughs> So I would definitely recommend you to try out Chinese pod, look at the link um, below and afterwards let me know what you think and also if you have other ideas to how to study Chinese on the go, please let me know in the comments below, share with all of our friends here on YouTube and yeah, that was all for this video. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you're having a great day or evening wherever you are in the world and I'll see you again very very soon. Ling Ling is out, see ya and 再见! Bye bye!